Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to run through how to use Power Automate to collect attachments from a personal Microsoft form and send them via email. I'm using the personal form in this instance and the files will be stored in OneDrive. However, if you're using group forms, you need to retrieve the file content in a slightly different way from the SharePoint site linked to the group. The method used for getting multiple attachments and sending them via email can be used for a variety of processes, not just forms. The process involves creating an array of attachments that can then be passed into an email. To get started, let's jump over to Microsoft Forms. I've already started a form with just a name field. You can now add a file upload field by selecting the Add New button and selecting the File Upload option from the dropdown. You'll need to acknowledge where the files are stored. One thing to note here that currently the file upload questions will not work if you are intending on sharing the form externally. You can then select the type of files to accept, the number of files, and the maximum size per file attachment. Since we are going to be sending these files via email, it is worth considering the sending and receiving restrictions of your email setup. If you need to work with large files, we could change the flow to send a link to the attachments instead of uh, attaching them to the email. But this is something that would need to be set up in the flow. If you're interested in seeing how this could work, please leave a comment below and I can do a separate video on this. Once the form has been set up, we can now go over to Power Automate and start creating the flow. To create the flow, select the Create option from the menu on the left-hand side. Since we want the flow to run every time a form is submitted, we will need to select the Automated Flow Type option. We can then select the trigger when a new response is submitted and click Create. In the Form ID field for the trigger, select the name of the form. Now we can add our first action to retrieve the form response. I've seen people set this up a couple of different ways. However, for me, I find it easier to just add the get response details action. Select the form name again and add the response ID from the trigger. Any of the file upload questions from Microsoft Forms is returned as, as JSON, which provides an array containing information about each of the attachments. In order to make this information usable, we need to use the pass JSON action and add the, the schema. I find the easiest way to do this is to add a compose action and add the answers to the, to the attachments question. Once the compose action has been added, we can then save and cause the, the flow to trigger. Before saving the flow, we should give it a meaningful name and then save the flow. Once the flow has been saved, we can go back to the flow details screen and this will bring up all the details for the flow. We can now go back to the form we created and submit a response, ensuring that we include at least one attachment. After the form has been submitted, we can now go back over to Power Automate and either refresh the page or click on the refresh button in the run section. If the flow is triggered successfully, we should see a new run in the list. If you click on the run that we triggered, you will be taken to the detail of the flow, which will allow us to see the information passed from the form. And in particular, we should see the information in the compose action. We will need to copy this information from the output of the Compose action, as we'll use this shortly. We can now start working on the flow again by clicking on the Edit button. So that we can use the data returned for the attachments, we will need to add a Pass JSON action. Then click on the Generate from Sample button and paste in the information copied from the Compose action output and click Done. This will convert the results into a JSON schema. This process can be handy for converting any JSON to a format that Power Automate can use. In the content field, add the file upload question. You can also choose to rename the action to something more meaningful.
The next step is to initialize an array variable. This variable will be used for storing information about the attachments, including the file name and the file content. In this case, I'm going to call the variable attachments and set the type to, a, to an array. We are now ready to retrieve the contents of the file for each of the attachments. Since these files are stored in OneDrive, we can add the get file content action for OneDrive. Note this will only work if it is a personal form and not a group form. And in the, uh, in the file field, select the ID value from the past JSON action. Since there could be multiple files and the past JSON action is holding an array, this action will be wrapped in and applied to each loop control. Now that we have the file content, we can add the file to the array. So that we can use the attachments array in the send email action, the item we need to add to the array needs to include the name of the file and the content of the file. To do this, we can use the append to array action and create an object with a couple of different properties. The first property is the name. This holds the name of the file. The name of the file can either be taken from the past JSON action which will be the name of the file plus the person's name based on who submitted the form, or you could create your own naming scheme. In this case, I'm just going to use the name of the file that was submitted with the form. The next property is content bytes. This will hold the file contents from the previous action. We will also need to wrap this value in a base64 expression. We are now ready to add the send email action. In this case, I will use the send email action for Office 365 Outlook, as the action provides us with more control and options such as who is sending the email. When sending an email using this action, we are required to enter the to address, subject, and a body to the email. We can then look at the advanced options by clicking on the Show Advanced Options link. This is where we can set up the attachment. By default, the action is set up to allow you to enter one attachment at a time by entering the name and attachment content. However, in this case, we may have multiple files to attach. So in order to use the attachments array, we need to click on the little T button and the view will change. We can now add the attachments variable to the attachments field. The other field I normally change when using this action is the importance. If this field is left blank, the email will send with a low importance. However, depending on what you're using the process for, will determine what you use here. We are now ready to save and test the flow, and since we had previously tested the flow, we can either submit a new form or select the option using data from the previous runs and select the last latest successful run. This will save you from having to fill in the form again. Once the flow is successfully run, you should be able to go over to your email or the mailbox that you sent it to and see a new email with the attachments. There may be a couple of modifications you would like to make to the flow. This is really just to tidy up the process and implement handling of an error, which will occur if there are no files uploaded. The first one is really just moving the attachment array variable to the top. I think it just makes it easier if your flows have, especially if your flows have multiple variables. The other adjustment to make is handling if there are no files uploaded. I find the easiest way to do this is to add a condition control before the pass JSON action. Once the condition control is added, check to make sure that it is not blank by adding the file upload question response and setting the condition to is not equal to and leaving the value blank. We can then drag the pass JSON action, the apply to each loop and send email into the yes branch. This will make sure that the actions only occur if there have been files uploaded to the form. Depending on your process, you could also add actions to the no branch. Thanks for watching and hopefully you've found this video useful.